Countless champions have been crowned throughout the history of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! But what about the underdogs, the dark horses, the decks that upon first glance make you question everything you thought you knew about the game? In this series, both MBT and myself will be showcasing some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s wackiest unsung heroes. Each episode will feature new decks, new strategies, and the results will be unpredictable. You've seen the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this is the history of Jank. My name is Alex Simo, and I have ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis is a chronic inflammatory disease that affects the lining of the colon, causing the formation of small sores and ulcers, as well as a plethora of debilitating symptoms. I've lived with this miserable disease for 15 years, and there does not yet exist a cure. That's why for the month of December, I'm helping raise both money and awareness for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation so that no one has to suffer like I have. For every milestone achieved through your donations, I'll be making dedicated videos for your enjoyment. All proceeds will go directly to the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Click the links down below to donate now and to learn more about my story with ulcerative colitis. Together, we will find a cure. I am on a losing streak to end all losing streaks. I can't seem to scrape a win in history. I can't win in jank. My domain? It's time to call up the dragon rulers. Today we are playing a deck with three dragon rulers in it. Three Tempest Dragon Ruler of Storms. We are playing the one, the only, Mecha Phantom Beast. You might be looking at a card like Dracosack and thinking, wow, that's broken with the dragon rulers, and of course you'd be correct. But it's also not terrible in its native archetype, the Mecha Phantom Beasts. Outside of the rulers exactly, there's not really cards better at making sevens than Mecha Phantom Beast Tetherwolf. The unfortunate reason why Mecha Phantom Beasts were never able to crack in a metagame contention despite having this incredible utility is there are no other good Mecha Phantom Beasts. Tetherwolf is extremely powerful and the rest of them are not. It's really quite frustrating. Mecha Phantom Beasts have a lot of interesting things to be doing with their time. Aerial Recharge ensures that you always have tokens available, either for Synchro Summons or to protect your Mecha Phantom Beasts. Do a Barrel Roll is an Omni, provided you've got any Mecha Phantom Beast tokens on your side of the field. Mecha Phantom Beast Conqueruda is a Reborn? I mean, it's legitimately quite frustrating that this archetype was never particularly playable. It's even got machine duplication targets in Stealth Ray and Wall Blurin. And all this dances around the ultimate truth of this format, which is if your deck's game plan is to make Mecha Phantom Beast Drake a sack, you are going to lose to a lot of cards that people are already playing to beat decks way, 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 way better than you. It turns out that cards that beat the Dragon Rulers being just as viable against Mecha Phantom Beast Star Ray means that you're not going to have a good time. Let's get into the individual cards. We've got a copy of Dandelion and a copy of Birdman. Three copies of Mecha Phantom Beast Blue Impala. This is a tuner, but can only be used for the Synchro Summon of a Machine Monster, and the other Synchro Materials have to be Mecha Phantom Beast Monsters. This card has a little bit of utility. You can use cards in your hand as material, provided they're Mecha Phantom Beast Monsters, and you can also banish it from the graveyard to put a token on your side of the field, but it's not a particularly good normal. Mecha Phantom Beast Hamstrat summons two Mecha Phantom Beast tokens when it is flipped face up. Mecha Phantom Beast Stealth Ray allows you to destroy individual spell traps by tributing tokens, and when it gets in, it can also make a token of its own. It's only got 100 attack, but that puts it at a perfect position to be abused with machine duplication. Tether Wolf is actually good. On normal summon, it makes a Mecha Phantom Beast token. Its level increases to 7, and it can pop the token in order to gain 800 attack, kind of like a proto Pankratops. Three copies of War Blurin. This is a tuner, which makes it actually kind of weird with machine duplication. If it's sent to the graveyard for the Synchro Summon of a Machine-type monster, that's the condition under which it makes a token, but it also prevents you from special summoning anything other than wind monsters for the remainder of the turn, which is why we are not playing a lot of cards that are probably really good in our archetype. Finally, the glue that holds it all together, three copies of Tempest Dragon Ruler of Storms. We're playing one limiter removal, three machine duplication, a one-for-one, one, three aerial recharge, which, once per turn, can special summon a Mecha Phantom Beast token, and during each player's end phase, you have to tribute a token or a Mecha Phantom Beast or send this to the graveyard. We've got a bottomless trap hole, a Compulse, a Dimensional Prison, three do a barrel roll, one goes in match, double mirror force, solemn warning, soul 
Soul Drain, and Torrential Tribute in the side. We've got Dark Hole, Double Mystical Space Typhoon, a Twister, Double Debunk, Double Gozen Match, Triple Imperial Iron Wall, one the Transmigration Prophecy, and Triple Vanity's Emptiness. In the extra, we've got a bunch of synchros you all know and love. Conqueruda, Orient Dragon, Scrap Dragon, Stardust, Gauntlet Launcher, Mecha Phantom Beast, Drake Attack, Big Eye, Master of Blades, Lucky Strayed, Zen Mains, and with that, I hope we can get out of the jank tank. Damn, talk about a blast from the past. I remember there was that one guy at our locals that would always play Baby Raccoons, and if you've played against this deck before, you know that this cute deck looks very unassuming. This deck can rail you absolutely out of nowhere because this deck has some extraordinarily powerful cards that are sort of shoehorned into like the beast typing and like beast restrictions but this deck made it work i think it took all the cards from like shadow specters or whatever set around that time that these cards came out in this 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 deck was crazy again like by you know jank standards right it's not going to be a competitive top tier threat but it's still going to be able to hold its own weight introducing baby raccoons ladies and gentlemen now this deck is kind of cool so let's go ahead and just do the card by card and talk about it why that is so first up we have the two baby raccoons pompoko and tantan so when it's normal summon you can special level two beast monster from your deck in face down defense position except itself you're mainly going to be going for tantan but there are some other things you can go for as well and then you can't special summon any monsters during the turn you activate this except for beast so it does lock you but you're going to be wanting to go for tantan tantan on flip you special summon a level two beast from your deck except another copy of tantan so in a very simplistic sense this just gets you to the main card here which is tantan and tantan sort of gets everything started so you're going to want to flip tantan up typically you want to protect it because you want the body just because you need to access the extra deck you can summon any of your other twos typically you want to go for something like kalantosa because when this is special summoned by a beast monster you can pop a card on the field which is fantastic that's a great effect and then you can go into a rank two typically you're going to go for number 64 ronin raccoon sendeyu now this is a level two beast specific rank two that requires two level two beasts and once per turn you can detach an exceeds material to special summon a kagamusha raccoon token which is a beast earth level one attack question mark defense zero token and when summoned its attack becomes equal to the current attack of the monster on the field that has the highest attack and while you control another beast this can't be destroyed by battle or card effects so what's nice here is that if your opponent has a large thing on the field as long as you can access this card you're able to match it and then you can crash that into it essentially killing it or there are ways to even pump it even further beyond which we'll talk about a bit later but you can also copy your own monsters as well just to have more gigantic beaters to hit your opponent with we have two effect baylor this isn't a beast but it's just a good card it's also a tuner which is kind of relevant we have elephant which is a beast level two tuner which has a somewhat decent effect but typically you just want this for a tuner two kalantosa Raiko is something you could technically set with pompoko it is a level two beast which is very funny and it is technically removal the fabled cerberel is a fantastic card because it's a tuner that we can summon and then we also have some other cards in here as well like thunder king ryo just because you know they're good even though they're not beasts and the last two beasts are tree otter and wind up kitten so tree otter is kind of neat because it boosts a face up monster on the field by a thousand attack and you need to control a beast to do that so what's nice is that you can boost the attack of something with tree otter then make send you and copy whatever the attack boosted monster is and even though this only lasts until the end of the turn the token will still recognize that it was at the point of activation so let's say you have a 2000 attack monster boost it to three with tree otter if you make a token on the 3000 attack monster the token stays 3000 forever so it doesn't matter if the boost goes away or not so tree otter's in here for that specific purpose and then wind up kitten is nice because it's actually like sort of removal it's like a nice little compulse effect so there is some useful beast monsters in here some of you may know these from sprite because they actually have seen play because they're level twos but that does it for these here for the spells, we have a book. This actually has some interesting synergy because you could reflip down your Tantan potentially. Two Closed Forest. I gotta be honest, I'm not sure why this deck is playing this, but it gives all beasts 100 attack for each monster in your graveyard, which is not bad considering it actually pumps up a lot of your guys to make them more threatening than they usually would be. It also stops field spells from being activated. So if your opponent's playing a field spell based deck, which during this time, there weren't a ton of decks doing that, but there could be some reason to play that there. Triple MST and triple of the card that sort of brings this deck all together, a obedience school this card if you've never read it before is crazy if you control no monsters you special summon three level two beasts or level two or lower excuse me beast effect monsters from your deck their effects are negated and they're destroyed during the end phase and you're locked into beast the turn that you do this but this gets all your play started this card is a fantastic card to open and just a crazy card in general people have always been trying to abuse this because anytime you're summoning three monsters with one card there's got to be something there we're also playing triple upstart rounding out the spells and then the traps we have a bottomless a breakthrough skill 
Double Burst Rebirth. This card's kind of sick. You pay 2k life points, target a monster in your graveyard, and special summon it in face down defense position. Some people may remember this from Shadal. It actually had a home in this deck because, again, if you can reset your Tan Tan, you're off to the races. We also have Compulse, Double Phoenix Chain, Double Mirror Force, Warning, and Torrential Tribute. For the extra, we've got a lot of weird cards in here. So we have Armory Arm, Miss Bird, Clausalis is in here for some reason. Naturia Beast is in here because it's an actual good card, although it is difficult to make in this version of the deck considering the deck isn't at the state that it is a little bit later on once it gets some more of its support cards. The Fabled Kudabi, never saw this card before, probably never summoning this, but the main card of the deck is the Fabled Unicorn. This needs a Fabled Tuner and a non-tuner monster, and while you and your opponent have the same number of cards in hand, negate all cards and effects activated by your opponent, and if you do, destroy those cards. This is one of the most annoying and frustrating cards to play against if you've never played against this deck, because your opponent can typically control the number of cards in their hand rather easily, and as a result, it makes it almost impossible for you to be able to play your cards, especially in incredibly simplified game states. This card can basically win the game by itself. That's it for the synchros, though. The Xyz, we have Armored Kappa, Digusto Phoenix, Downward Magician, Gachi Gachi, Herald of Pure Light, uh, Triple Sendeu because it's a beast, and a Slacker Magician. The side, we have Double Maxi, another Close Forest, don't know why we need that. Dark Hold, Dimensional Fisher. This deck doesn't necessarily need the Graveyard, so it can play under these cards, but for stuff like Burst Rebirth, you kind of want these cards here, so this is only like as an anti countermeasure to whatever deck you're playing. Double Dust and Eradicator, two Light Imprisonings, a Macro, Triple Rivalry, and a Soul Drain rounding out our side. So, I'm excited. This deck, I have fond memories of just playing against it at locals a ton, and just like every time I saw it, it impressed me. It wasn't as good in this form. I think this is one of the first iterations because later on, it gets cards like Ayers Rock Sunrise and Leo Keeper of the Sacred Tree and a few other cards that really just help take it over the top. But for now, let's see what the deck can do. Let's not make you guys wait any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. You just miss Auroradon that much that you have to find some way to sneak it in. History of jank in all places, even if it's a substitute, it's not even the real thing. Like this is as close as you're gonna get. Uh, I gotta tell you, I think he could come back. You know, like legitimately, I, I, what, I, what's the problem? You know, maybe that should be a take that goes on a certain Twitter video that someone does on their channel at twitch.tv slash MBT Yu-Gi-Oh! Wow, I appreciate the plug, uh, but that take would never make it on. My viewers are just ridiculous. One of their best takes is probably something like Baby Raccoon was a top tier meta threat that no one ever explored. Yeah, and I can't wait for these Baby Raccoons to just 3-0 you right now. Yeah, so yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, let's get into it. Shout out the patron, Zero Z. Thanks for the support. I can't wait to get bodied in Rock, Paper, scissors for like the ninth week in a row because this is just okay all right we won good oh Four. wait you know i always throw paper <laughs> <laughs> oh i forgot i forgot i was rolling the die the <laughs> it, it's amazing okay, that okay 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 all right well we're here i can still pick for you to go no first no, Let me no, roll no, the no. Die. no 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 if you roll the die it's completely fine okay i rolled the die do you have the hand up yes i rolled a three odd <laughs> it's even <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I have been undefeatable on die rolls recently, and I've been very yeah. defeatable in games. All right. I'm honestly okay with that. Best of luck, buddy. Best of luck to you, too. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean... I would agree. At first glance, this hand actually looks like a real deck, and then you see a couple of cards in particular, and you think, nope. We're going to normal summon Mecha Phantom Beast Stealth Ray. Okay, I've never seen this card in my life. Yeah. I'm down. Well, you're about to see a lot of it, because I also opened Doom. Holy shit, it's a machine, yep. I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, Joseph, this is crazy. You're about to go hog wild. You're about to get, you're about to <laughs> go nuts and you would be right. Ready? Are you, are you prepared? I don't, oh, I really do not think you are. All right, here we go. Pass. <clears throat> uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about, baby. All right. Uh, that's it. For what it's worth, Stealth Rate does have 2,100 defense. He's got okay. an ass he on him. He's else. got an ass. Yeah. Once per turn, I don't care. This thing doesn't do anything. All right, I'll draw. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll start with everyone's favorite upstart goblin. Yeah, let's go. Wow, this is miserable, <laughs> actually. Uh, okay, normal baby raccoon Ponpoko. This is miserable opens the combo. The normal's fine. All right, yeah, when you have two back row and a Zen mains. Yeah, this is so <laughs> Okay, great. I, I oh. do have warning for the effect. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, you're, like, okay, hamming this right. up. <laughs> all right, so we're going to put the boy back because he's never going to make it to the field. Oh, my God, go to the deck. He yeah, I put him in the deck, you can trust me. He wants to be your friend. Okay, shuffle this up. And, uh, boy, this was a very liberating turn. I'm gonna set two cards and pray. Go. All right, I will draw. 
Stand by main. Aerial recharge. Okay. Don't know what this is. Special summon a mecha phantom beast token. Yeah. So I'm going to go grab a token here. Sure. Uh, I'm going to trigger the effect of stealth ray and tribute the token to pop this. Ah, I see. You get to pop a spell and trap. Uh, that's a good one because it is nothing. I have effect mailer. Uh, that makes me think it really is something. Well, okay. Uh, let's switch the Zen mains to attack. We'll go to combat. We'll attack in. 15? I'm down. Are you sure? That's a lot of damage. You might as well just switch the stealth ray to attack, too. Mm, nope. Uh, while the stealth ray does make tokens if it connects, uh, you had Valor. So back to you. Uh, end phase of aerial recharge, sir. Yeah, I'll lose the stealth ray. Good. Get him out of here. All right, I'll draw. Den by main. This is not going well, folks. I will set another card and chuck it back to you. Aerial recharge, buddy. Sure. We'll activate aerial recharge, grab a token, and then, oh, and then okay, the let's get rid of it. Stand by main. Uh, I'm going to flip summon Hamstrat. When it's flipped face up, special summon two tokens. That's a lot. I'm going to warning that. Oh, that is atrocious. Sure, to the grave he goes. Um, I guess I'll just go to combat here. I don't know if I can do anything about it, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I'll take 50. Okay, second main. I'm going to set one. Uh, we'll go aerial recharge, and then we'll lose the token. Okay, we'll draw. I, I guarantee you, at some point, I will have a play. <laughs> uh, we'll do the old aerial recharge uh, yonky splunky. That's fine. Uh, battle, zen mains. So I can take one more zen mains hit? Or can you? Damage step? Uh-oh. Limiter removal? No, no! <laughs> So this is how it feels to be in the receiving end of that, huh? Uh, not fun, not fun. But now I get to go first, so maybe I can actually do something. All right, let's see if uh, you can open your aerial recharge, which is named Obedient School. Hey, guess what? Oh, <laughs> Obedient boy. School. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> this is a much different deck when you actually open good cards. Okay, so I get to special summon three level two or lower beasts with different names from my deck, but their effects are negated. Oh no, whatever was that? What am I gonna do with those? Okay, I, I need to think about how I actually wanna do this now. So there is a slight problem. What's the issue? The issue is that based off the rest of my hand, this obedient school is not as good as it could be, unfortunately. Ah, so we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna best deal with this. Okay, so we're gonna bring out a tree otter, a fabled Cerbero. Let's bring out Elephant. Wow, this sucks. Uh, we're gonna sink the tree otter and the fabled Cerbero for, I shit you not, the fabled Kudabi. You gotta have a four. Then we're gonna, speaking of four, we're gonna set four cards. Oh, um, okay. That's it. Obedience school will resolve and uh, Elephant will die. <laughs> Go ahead. You did not have another guy in hand. I see the problem. Correct. Now, yeah, because I could have made double Sendeu if I did, but... Uh, Unfortunately, that is not the case. Well, I really liked your play, buddy. So I am gonna, I'm gonna do something. You know what? Actually, I'm just gonna do two. You can, you can go ahead. Just two? I mean, yeah. I know you're scared of the fabled Kudabi. I am. All right. Anything in standby? No, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Main phase one. Yeah. I will set one. Okay. <laughs> go to battle. Go, fabled Kudabi. <laughs> it is Hamstrat. Uh, we'll summon some tokens. Sure. And then. Does that prevent him from dying? Why you control a token, this card cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. I feel like he's already marked for destruction, even though he flipped. While well, you control no tokens, if a face down defense position, Mecha Fan Beast Hamstrat, you control is attacked by a monster with higher attack than its defense. Flipping it face up after it has been decided that Mecha Fan Beast Hamstrat is destroyed by battle, the effect that special summons two Mecha Fan Beast tokens triggers. Uh, it has been determined the card has been destroyed by battle, so the effect that prevents this card from being destroyed while you control a token is not applied. Yes. This just came up like in prog or something. Uh, that's how I remembered that. But that that's it for my turn. Go ahead, buddy. All right. Enjoy your I tokens. Will draw. Stand by main. I'm going to enjoy them very much because now I will normal summon Mecha Phantom Beast Stealth Ray. Uh, that's not good. This is a soft once per turn, too. Uh-oh. Am I going to get, like, machine duped? Well, uh, is the normal here. summon okay? I'm thinking here, buddy. Hold on. The worst part about this is the tokens are live now, so I couldn't even kill this in battle if I wanted to. Uh, that's unfortunately fine. Uh, dupe. Book the Stealth Ray. Um, that's annoying. I mean, it's not great, uh, but it does stop the dupe. We'll do a barrel roll. 
Spell trap card is activated that tribute all tokens, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Wow. Okay. Okay. I mean, you don't have the tokens now, which is kind of good. It's something. Uh, we'll get a couple guys. Um, hmm. We should have a better three than Zen mains, but we really don't. Uh, we'll overlay here. Uh, we'll make Zen mains uh, battle. Wow. Into the set. Uh, I will fiendish chain the Zen mains. Uh, I will MST the fiendish chain. I will fiendish chain the Zen mains. <laughs> ah, yes, you will. Yes, you will. Uh, back to you. Uh, we'll draw. We're actually making some plays. I will flip some in ten ten. Oh God, that's crazy. Yep. This is the best play this deck can muster. So I get to special summon any rack or any any raccoon, any level two beast monster from my deck, except another one. So let's grab ourselves the best one, which is Kalantosa. Oh God. Yep. So when this is special summoned by a beast, I get to target a card on the field and destroy it. And I think I'm going to go after your little stealth right here. Sure. Then let's overlay these two. Uh, we're going to go for send to you. Yep. Uh, we'll activate the effect. That's fine. I don't know how much this matters. I think I want Tan Tan Engrave, though. Uh, so I get to make a token that is attack is tied with the monster on the field with the current highest current attack. So... Uh, this is a 2200 attack token. I will just go to battle and let's just get hit in here. So we'll attack. Seven. And then we'll go a thousand and twenty two. Okay. Second main, that's all I got. Get this guy out of here. Yep, Venus Chain's gone. Oh boy. Stand by main. Oh, right yep. on time, asshole. Uh Dark Hole. How does this work with Sandeyu's effect? Uh, Sandeyu's going to live here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so everything else dies. That's fine. Okay, uh, I'm going to normal summon Mecha Phantom Beast Blue Impala. It's not going to live for long. <laughs> and we'll try and get in. So this is 400. Yes. Gone. Okay, wow, that's shocking. Didn't think we'd get this far. Back to you. Dustin and phase. No, I needed that. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh, not great. Go. Okay, come on. Oh, boy. <laughs> Do I play around Gores? Um, I don't know why you would even be considering Gores in this deck, Joseph. What, when has Gores ever done anything to you in any series we've had together? I would say probably literally every <laughs> single time. <laughs> <sighs> Not recently. I gotta just do this. I gotta pass. I'll set and I'll pass. All right. Stand by me. Hamstrap. Yep. Okay, uh, well, uh, now what? <laughs> um, so the Hamstrat is a level nine, and that's awkward. Impala does not increase. I have some lines, they're not pretty. Uh, we'll just go to combat. I'll attack with Blue Impala. So this is ass because it's Raiko. Well, and okay. uh, I can't pop either of your dudes, so I have to pop a token, unfortunately. That, that's pretty good still, I feel like. I mean, uh, it's whatever. No, I needed that. Uh, we'll do 11. It's the next card on top. Yeah, it's fine. So we can go Impala and Token into a 6. Uh, we can go Hamstrat and Impala into a 9. That's it? That sucks. I don't like either of those options. So we're just going to set one and pass. Space the back row. Mm, it's limiter removal. Uh, I guess I'm kind of happy to hear that. All right. I think I just have to pass. All right. Stand by main. Well, now I wish I had gotten in that turn. 14, 11. Second main. We'll set again. Back to you. That's... Oh, my God. That's not a bad one, but... Oh, is it a bad one? Ryo. All right. I didn't think we'd get this far. Oh, you have to go... I uh, see. Okay. Battle. Yeah. What do I take out here? What am I well, afraid of? Well, while I control a token, the only card you can destroy is the token. So I'll destroy the token. You will not. I see that this is what I was concerned about. <laughs> All right. Uh, the tokens have zero attack, correct? Yes, they do. Okay. Yep. So I'm taking 25 guaranteed next turn. No draw a good card. I didn't. <laughs> uh, it still might be lethal. We go. So the one play that we've been able to do the whole time that I've been slow rolling you on is Hamstrat can uh, pop the token to summon a Mecha Phantom Beast from the graveyard. You'll notice I don't have any good ones. I've got three Stealth Ray and the Hamstrat. I can grab a Stealth Ray. We can overlay the Stealth Ray and the Hamstrat to go into a Zen main. So that's 15 plus 14. That is 29. That is not lethal. We can go Hamstrat cycle for Hamstrat. We can go Impala and a level three Hamstrat for a six. That would be like Orient Dragon. That's 23 plus 11, which is 34 and also not lethal. God, why did I attack that one turn? What a stupid <laughs> idea. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna cycle Hamstrat here. What are you targeting? 
uh, stealth ray. I will Valor the ha- Hamstrad. Oh, that is the cost. All right. Uh, well, let's go to combat. Take oh, 25. 14. Uh, second main. Oh, jeez. I can make, like, an Orient Dragon and pass. Boy, that's, like, really, f- really PP. That's, like, a very PP play. We are gonna do it. He's big. I mean, there's that. He's he's a lad. Uh, I will set one back to you. Please. Dark hole. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thrilling gameplay. I'll draw. Oh my god! <laughs> That's insane. Yep. No warning. No warning. Oh my god! It resolves. All right. All right. Now I gotta think. What we're gonna do here. So we're gonna go wind up kitten. Uh, we're gonna go Cerbero, and I guess we'll go Punpoko. Hmm. Anything here? Yeah, we'll go and match. So I'm locked into Earths. That's annoying. Okay, so I have to get rid of Cerbero. I mean, I gotta make something, otherwise he's six. I'm gonna put these in attack, by the way. I'm not gonna put them in defense. Yeah, sure. So I can make a send a you. Yeah, whatever. We'll go for him. Yeah, yeah. I wish you had summoned like a tree otter or something. <laughs> That's I already like... used the tree otter. I know. Joke's on you. Uh, let's go detach. I think the token is an Earth. Yes, it is. Yep. All right, so we'll get him. Uh, battle. I'll take two here. 2K. Now we pray. Uh, Alex, that was the best draw on my deck. I am not happy to hear that. I'm going to banish two stealth ray. Oh my god. Tempest? Anything here? Jesus Christ. I'm not dead. I'd have a hundred life points left. You are not dead, as frustrating as it is. I think I have to turn <laughs> Jeez. Okay. All right, uh, I would like to not die here. You're gonna get a guy. Um, I need 100 attack to kill you. Just like you needed 100 attack to kill me. We'll go Impala here uh, to summon a token. Go sure. ahead. Draw. <laughs> I mean, I will activate my <laughs> yeah. raccoon. Yes. Uh, battle. Yeah. Uh, I will attack. Yep. Unfortunately, the token's a win, so there's no reason for me not to attack okay. here. Go ahead. <laughs> Stand by me. We're bringing him out again. Maxi. Yeah, for sure. Uh, battle. Wow. I will take 14. <laughs> Second main. Uh, yep. Back to you. I get an extra draw. Uh, <laughs> How many wins do you have? You have two <laughs> wins left. Two Uh-oh. wins. I've exactly. I will shift send a you to defense and I will set two cards face down and your dragon will return to your hand in the end phase. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Oh, perfect. All right. We'll banish the last two. Yes, he will. Uh, down he comes. No uh, response. Combat. Wah. I will compulse the temp. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sounds good. Back to you. <laughs> Any monster! Oh my god. That does it! Uh, yeah, it does. No! Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. How did I win? That was the wackest game of Yu Gi Oh I've ever played in my life. <laughs> oh my I, I don't know how I walked with that. I feel like I shouldn't have, but, you know, it is what it is. Oh, no, I think, I think you definitely should have because, holy hell. Oh, this hand does um, nothing as well, so. Uh, Fantastic. Back to you. I'll draw. Best card in my deck. See if you got anything. Uh, I do not. Wow. Okay. Let's grab the tree otter. Uh-huh. Honestly, Ryko kind of sucked. I think I'm going to take him off of <laughs> <laughs> and let's also go for... We'll go for... S- Cerbero? Yeah, we'll go for Cerbero, too. All right, I lied. I did have something. All right. Uh, well, that was fun. They all go. Interesting. Very interesting for everyone involved. Thankfully, I can still do this. <laughs> Better not well, be sound. One, on <laughs> two, three. Was that go Tantan? Ahead. All right, I'll draw for turn. Stand by me. Could be literally anything. Well, normal blue Impala. How much am I scared of blue Impala? I'll warning it. Really? Yeah. You're going to really do that to me. You're fine. Yeah. Uh, end phase oh, dust. Let me, let me set one card if this changes sure. anything. Well, I'm going to dust that back row then. Okay. Well, it did change something. Okay. Uh, And then, yeah, I'll draw. 
It is 10 10, to no one's surprise. Yep. We'll grab a Kalantosa. Uh, sure. Kalantosa's neat because it doesn't have to be a face up card. So let's go after this one. It is Dimensional Prison. Uh, here's what we'll do. Let's just space the back row. Uh, I'll chain it. Um, we'll compulse the Kalantosa. Sure. Uh, I have yet to normal, so I will normal Cerbero. And I actually th thank you, buddy, because now I get to make Unicorn. That's fine. 23. 23 is okay. Over to you. Stand by me. I'm going to banish Tempest and Blue Impala. For Tempest. Uh, activating Tempest here? Uh, yes. Chain Maxi. Okay. Uh, does this send this Tempest to the grave? Um, yes. I chain Maxi here. Now we're both at one card in hand. As a result of that, Maxi is now active. Tempest attempts to resolve, but because now we both have one card in hand, it does not. But now you're asking where the Tempest goes as a result. It does say it destroys those cards, so I yeah. imagine it does go to the graveyard. Okay, well, back to you. All right, uh, that was productive. I'll draw. So the problem now is you have zero cards in hand. Uh, so we'll go set, set, 23. Yep. And then over to you. Back to you. This is interesting now. So I could keep this card in hand. You draw to two. If you try to play a card, then we're both at one again. Uh, Yeah, 23. We do this for sure for now. I'll take that. Just to ensure Unicorn can connect because then you can't use your back row. Um, I think it's probably fine for me to just pass here. You got it. <sighs> oh. Wow. It's barrel Unicorn roll. Unicorn is so fucking so, backbreaking. Um, if you can, like, get the lock on. He's, he's crazy. This one, I think the number one yeah. issue was I drew zero uh, Mecha Phantom Beasts that do anything. You know, shout out to Impala. Impala. What are you, you talking know? about? No, it's it's very strange. I mean, and this is why this deck is not particularly good. While it has really powerful cards like do a barrel roll and cards that slot into machine duplication lines like uh, uh, Warblurin and Stealth Ray... Uh, it really does not have very many playables. Uh, Tetherwolf is very good at making sevens, and Which Hamstrat you didn't see all game. is very good. Uh, Aerial Recharge is a powerful card, and of course we do get to play Tempest, uh, but that's it. Um, that's uh, four cards in a 40-card deck, and the remainder, right. unfortunately, is going to have to be full of Mecha Phantom Beasts. And as a result, it has been trying to do this at the same time as people were making Mecha Phantom Beast uh, Drake a Sack turn one with, uh, you know, Tempest and Blaster rather than Tempest and a, you know, a Tether Wolf you found in the garbage. It does not really work <laughs> out. And uh, as you saw that time, the deck has so much capacity to break, even when it finds its powerful uh, Dragon Ruler monsters. It's actually on a uh, pretty low monster count because you can't justify playing any more Mecha Phantom Beast than you already are. I think we're on 19. Um, and so many of its wow. cards like do a barrel roll, aerial recharge, and machine duplication are conditional in that they require you to have other Mecha Phantom Beasts. Uh, having a bunch of two-card combos in a format where every deck's two-card combo wins the game and the two cards are you know, like Blaster Red Ox is uh, not a great place to be. It is kind of depressing, right? That the main flagship boss monster of the archetype is much more slotted in a deck that can just shit out two sevens. They should have just mm -hmm. made the dragon rulers. Uh, I mean, obviously Tempest has incidental synergy because they're all win. But I mean, if they just made the dragon rulers like uh, Mecha Phantom Beast equivalents, then that would have been better than what this archetype was trying to do, which is so sad. I, I have fond memories of this deck from locals, not because I was playing it, but because there was always uh, one of the people there that was always playing it. And one of the things that I realized is missing this is very early stage raccoons so mm -hmm. there's some cards missing here that i didn't realize until we started playing because i remembered some of the lines he would do and i was trying to replicate them but then i realized we're missing a lot of cards one of the biggest cards that we're missing is actually leo keeper of the sacred tree which is a level 10 synchro beast so one of the things i remember happening was that he would summon leo and then send a you and then by doing so he has like a 3100 attack token uh, which would be crazy, right? There was like different lines like that. I don't remember how he got there. It may have been like some line with uh, uh, maybe with like Redox or something like that, but I, I don't remember. There was something like that. We're also missing Valorifon, which I also think doesn't come out till later as well. And uh, Valorifon nice comes out 
way i think the last set of 2014 okay so the issue there is that that gives you another really strong level two beast that this deck sort of desperately needs you're talking about being on a low monster count i'm on like 16 or like maybe even 15 because i think the maxis don't really count as monsters for this deck so after firing like that one obedience school in game two i felt like i was out i was out of monsters at that point and i was just hoping to get anything and the back row they just kept coming but if you don't have any pressure to actually put on the opponent that's where this deck can really struggle it's also weird because like sendayu is like slightly dependent on just big monsters existing on the field and if you can't stick anything the fact that it can make gigantic tokens they're not exactly as gigantic as you want them to be and you see you're barely applying any pressure so you can see the faults with this deck as well but yeah. i mean anytime you see your opponent flipping tan tan you are you know kind of shitting yourself and of course this um this deck has been through maybe more iterations than any other deck as people tried to make it playable uh, to some degree. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, we see now that it's not particularly powerful into this metagame because, you know, people are summoning dragon rulers and the like. Um, in future metagames, uh, it really does uh, shine. The Fabled Unicorn is such an interesting card. Um, as we start integrating one-star beasts into obedience schooled lines, you know, you don't really need yeah. Tree Otter. You can start using Valerophon as your tuner in order to make, like, Naturia Beast against a significant amount of the uh, metagame. Uh, because obedience school doesn't use your normal, um, if you have a Valerophon in hand, you can go, like... Uh, three or uh, two twos and a one for the Churi Beast, normal the Valerophon, cycle yep. for one of the twos backs, Sandayu 2200 guy. Like, yeah. your turn one setups become more powerful and more powerful. And then uh, after uh, 2015, um, the Kaijus are released kind of as a direct answer to uh, the Cosmos. And those, it turns out, are really big guys. And people start tinkering with ways in which you can like Sondayu OTK using those. They fill out the yep. remaining slots in the deck in terms of monsters that are like flexible as removal spells. Uh, the deck continues to persist at locals for a very long time. Um, uh, Gavin of Playoffs fame uh, brought this to, I, I think, a regional right before Zodiac format. Um, and that was the last time I think you could even, you know, charitably call this playable. But it has staying power, sure. especially among more casual duelists. It's also missing Ayers Rock Sunrise, I just realized as well, yeah. which is like Monster Reborn. And again, when a lot of the lines sort of funnel into Leo, being able to resurrect Leo at any moment in the game is just horrifying. So, oh, yeah. yeah, as the deck evolves, it continuously just becomes more and more of a rogue threat, uh, if that, or maybe like a locals threat, if you want to call it that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it was kind of neat to see like the first incarnation of this deck, and it just continues to get better from there. I imagine we'll be back for this, but um, uh, I think what these games kind of showed off is that the thing that this deck does that makes it kind of a threat is there's always something that your deck can't beat. Yeah. Between Leo and Nat Beast and Unicor and even the the four star fabled you summoned game one. Uh, yeah, the Kodabi. Yeah. Kodabi. Decks just don't have an answer to one of these. And if you're yeah. the obedient schooled player, you just got to find the one. You got to make it and you got to tell your opponent, did you board into your out? If no, let's go to game three. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout outs to Shout1317, Tim00x3, Moto, MBT Play, Medulce, Cameron Smith, Pony Stark Part 2, The Synchro Guy, Dan the Manhoven, Phoenix the Immortal, I Ship MBT and Simo, Draconic, Jordan Coons, Iron Bladesman, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, Valen Jackson, Dylan Hunter, Cody Brett's Extremely Vulgar Man, Little Fade Leaf, Brody Eastwood, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Hornet, Indian to Tai Show, TC Gaming, thanks for the sleeves, Dad, Max, Matthew Brady, Twinkle Muncher, Eater of Crayons, Luabon, Yodabon, Helios 515, Simo's Chaos Cooking Draft, Simping for Simo, Cheeks McLapperty, Stolfin Amethyst, Dalton, LGMBTQ, Nim Noodle, Mallow Branch of the Burning Tunnels, Wonder Waffle, Skull Servant, and the Wandering Doomed or Boyfriends, MBT Cancel by All Community Soon, Cancel by All Committee Soon, Cancel by All Players Soon, All Yus, Unis the Bus, The Undertaker vs. Simo and MBT, Shrugs, Ix, The Crystal Beast Enthusiast, ITF, and Corvain. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.